So when it comes to getting recruited, I think you should set up a social media strategy. Like, I don't see why anybody wouldn't do that. Like, if I had social media and I knew what I knew now, like, I would just be going ham on that. I wouldn't care about nothing else. Like, get the minutes on varsity wherever you're at. I don't care where you're at. Like, and and all these kids that want to go to the best school, like, I wouldn't necessarily go to the best school all the time. Like, the best team. Everybody wants to go to the best team, and it's already built, and they already went in, and you just want to jump on the bandwagon type shit. Like, I think a better strategy is to go to a team that needs you. Like, if you're really good, go to a team that needs you and then play against the good teams and perform well and then have that as film. Like, that's the biggest leverage you can have. It's like, okay, I had 30 on the number one team in my state. I had 22 on the number seven team in my state. Like, if you have that film, like, that holds a lot more weight than you're on a stacked team and y'all went to the state championship. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't understand the logic of, you know, young players now where they just want to go to a ready-made system and i understand if it's like bad coaching and things like that but if it's a situation where the coach is solid and the team is just they need some work and the players are young and like you really like that go to that team and dominate like i don't understand why you wouldn't do that um but this is like this is a full breakdown of exactly what you should do if you're trying to get recruited and like i recommend taking notes on this like i'm gonna post this on my youtube if you miss um any other you want to rewatch i'm gonna make sure i post this on my youtube in the ne- uh, within this next week but number one is set up all your social media platforms like set up every page set up an instagram set up a facebook set up a a linkedin set up a twitter and set up a tiktok and a youtube like make sure yeah i would do all those platforms and like because you're gonna you're gonna post instagram reels you're gonna post facebook reels you're gonna post on linkedin like there's a lot of coaches on linkedin There's, there's a lot of international coaches on linkedin too um and low key like if i was um if I was young in high school, like if I would have known back then, I would have tried to go pro out of high school to just a different country. I really would have tried it um, because I think I, was, I had a just my knee if, without my knee injury. Like I had the skill level. Um, I just needed like to be in the environment of that and get the consistency of tough competition. Like I really would have tried that. Um, I swear I just had deja vu because I've seen this before. <laughs> but um, that's the first thing I would do. Set up every single one of my social media pages. And then because uh, you're going to post on Facebook Reels, right? LinkedIn, TikTok twitter and youtube and youtube's where you're gonna have like your mixes like i would have multiple mixes and i would have full games on there so if a coach if they like your initial mix then they'll go watch full games like that's how you want it to be right and so i would do that and then in the bio of every single page that you have you need to be putting your real face like there's so many kids that message me they have no face they have no info they have some weird name and they're just like Hey, can you help me do X, Y, and Z? Or can you come film my game today? I had literally had one of those. Somebody's like, can you come film my game today? And it's like, bro, I literally don't know who the fuck you are. You have a blank profile picture and you have like a weird name. I don't know you. I don't even know who you play for. And so the first thing is like, make sure you put your real face as your profile picture. Like a like the same way you make an ESPN profile, the same way if you go look up a player like on Basketball Reference or ESPN and they have their face and their name, like you, that's how you need to build out all your social media platforms for your basketball careers. So if you got a personal page, make a separate one. Like make sure your email is your real name, your first and last name at Gmail or Yahoo or whatever you want to use. Make sure it's just standard. Like don't be all crazy and get a bucket, you know, 49 at Gmail. Like nobody's going to email that shit, bro. <laughs> like not anybody that you're trying to get to take you take you seriously. Like they're not going to do that shit. And so um, like that's the first thing I would do. And then um in the bio of all those put like put your height put your weight put your age put your grade put what school you go to what year you graduate and then within like if you could pin a post or something like that i would put um i would put my vertical on there like i'd even show myself testing for the vertical and like just go and i would literally film myself at a hoop like i would make this my pinned post it would be like here's my attributes like, and so people can go through the carousel of like, you know, your stats or, or your attributes and all those things. And I would literally put a video of me jumping and like tr- getting as close to the rim as I can or dunking and putting what my vertical is. Like, even if you want to do the vertical test or just stand by the rim and see how high you can get your hand above the rim and things like that, I would put that as a video. Um, and then I would put my wingspan. I would put what I bench, what I squat, um, some t- show some type of speed. 
like whether you want to run the 40 or 100 meter dash or whatever it is like show your speed if you're fast if you don't if you're not fast and you can't jump high avoid those things so like obviously if you're not athletic don't put your you know let your game talk but if you're super athletic like make sure they know that you know when they go to your page you're like oh this dude has a 37 inch vert like okay let me look at this like that's that catches some coaches eyes you know what i'm saying like oh this dude runs a, a 11 second or 10 i don't even know what's fast for 100 meters like a 10 second 100 meter dash like let me okay he's fast like i can show him how to dribble and shit he's fast like you know what i'm saying they're gonna look at that type of stuff and then um after you do that let me see what else i got and then also put what position you play so like you could put combo guard or you could put wing slash power forward or power forward slash center center. Like make sure they know that too. And then like, that's how you want your profile to look. So it's going to have all the attributes. It's going to have your name. It's going to have where you live, what school you go to, um, all these types of things. And then what I would do, especially at the end of the season is I would put together your best highlights. And the thing about highlights is you don't want to be regular. So like if your opening highlight is just you doing a catch and shoot, you already fucking lost. Like they're, they've seen a thousand of those probably within the last two months and so your first the first clip matters like if you're youtube and you got a poster on somebody that better be the first clip if you got a a a video of you crossing somebody and like shooting it from you know 35 feet out and draining it that better be the first clip and then after that what i would say is you gotta show things that stand out and so don't show you know 10 videos of you know 10 clips of you just shooting spot up threes like it's okay okay, great like thank you for the 10 clips of spot up threes um but i would do that and then um i would make it like the the extra things i would add is i'd show like hustle plays or defense or like blocking shots or steals like show something that's a little bit different like gritty you know what i'm saying like you diving on the floor for a loose ball and like passing it to your teammate, like show some good shit like that. If I'm a coach, because you got to think coaches are recruiting. So like, obviously, you know, the type of player that you are, if you're making like these type of profiles for yourself and you're not being seen, there's a thousand of you, you know what I'm saying? Like there's a thousand players that have the exact skills that you have, but there's not a thousand players that genuinely would dive on the ground, like, you know, full force and, and make a good play and pass it to their teammate. Like there's not a thousand of those. You know, and so you got that type of clip, like throw that in there. If you got, you know, blocking a shot or taking a charge or like locking up full court, I would literally put that in the highlight. And and then the highlight film, like don't make it um don't make it more than like two minutes. Like ain't nobody gonna watch your seven minute mix. I promise you. They're just they're just not. Like coaches don't wanna go through all that. They just wanna see, okay, let me watch the first thirty seconds, let me watch the minute. Make it like two minutes if they're super interested. But, you know, first clip is your best clip that you have for this season and then everything after that is like you know something different like you know maybe a couple maybe um i think taking a charge is a good one um like in like showing passion like i look for that i literally look for that in players like when they take a charge and they stand up and i like flexing and shit and yelling like i look for that shit you know what i'm saying that's real passion and so if you got that like show that um you know, and those are the things that are going to get you to stand out. And I'm coming at this from a marketing perspective of just understanding people. Like, think about you. If you're not going to you're not going to watch videos online of just some dude hitting spot up jumpers all day long, unless it's literally Steph Curry, the best shooter in the world. Like you, people will watch that, but no one's going to sit here and watch like Tim Hardaway Jr. hit spot ups all day. You know what I'm saying? And so think of it from that psychology of like, what do people actually want to see and make and, and so when coaches come to your page or whoever basketball minds come to your page, they get interested based on like, OK, these are good plays like this stands out, you know, but regardless of, you know, who you are or what I've seen before, like this is a little bit different. And so that's how you want to kind of market it, because at the end of the day, this shit is marketing, bro. Like you're trying to market yourself. And so you are a product. You are an asset to a basketball team. You need to show that, you know, and they already signed some dude that's getting a full ride that's going to, you know, go in and get buckets. Like they already have that dude that on full scholarship. And so don't think that you're showing yourself getting hella buckets is going to be like the end all be all. Like, yes, it helps. I would put that stuff towards the end, but up front in the first 30 seconds, I'm showing all types of shit. I'm showing everything I can do. I can, I'm showing tough rebounds in traffic and throwing a full court outlet pass. Like I'm putting that in there. You know what I'm saying? Like that's me. Cause I think like coaches would be like, okay, this, this dude does a lot. He doesn't just put the ball in the basket and meanwhile he don't even know how to set a proper screen you know show that you can do more than one thing and then after that um 
Let me see what else I'm, I'm make sure I put my notes. And then after that, I think I mentioned before is like make a real email and I would use that email to connect to make all your new accounts. And so, you know, whatever first and last name at whatever, like I don't care if you got to put an underscore or a dot in the middle. You could put a little number at the end if it's not available. If you got a normal last name like, you know, John Williams or some shit, um, <laughs> you know, like whatever you got to do, that's just your name at, you know, Gmail or Yahoo or whatever. Um, and then after that what I would start doing is post individual clips. Like, cause I literally discover people by just scrolling through and I'll discover, I still discovered some girl in Australia like four years ago. Now she's literally getting the offer from every single one of the best D ones in the country, you know, and I discovered her four years ago and it's like, okay, now she's 16 and she's killing, but I just saw her because she was just posting clips of her playing. And I'm like, okay, this kid has skill. Like she has footwork, you know what I'm saying? And like, even if you show yourself doing some workouts, like, you know, show the fact that you work on your game and don't just be doing cone shit. Like none of that shit matters to a real coach. You know, make sure it's like it's proper work. Then some shit that a coach would put you through, like a like if your head coach put you through a workout, put yourself through that workout and have that on video too. And be like, this is how I work out. You know what I'm saying? And and make sure it's real. Like don't bullshit them, you know, because you're going to have to show up there eventually if they recruit you. And so don't be like, okay, I'm going to do this workout one time just for the video. Like make it a part of your lifestyle before you actually post that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, because eventually it's going to come up and, and the truth's going to reveal itself. So don't put yourself in a situation to where it's like everything you showed them was a lie. Now you showed up here and you're full of shit and now they want you to transfer and nobody's going to trust you anymore. So that's just just remember that. But show them like you working out, um, show clips like if you get really good clips in the game, um, even if it's something as simple as like, OK, you hit somebody with a move and you go to the basket and you drop a dime like that's a clip right there. You know what I'm saying? And there, there might be one where you pump fake and the dude flies by and now you dribble over, hit a jumper. Like that's another clip right there. And so I would post infinity of those type of clips, all like everything that you've done all season, I would get every single play that you have and then just post them back like one a day or two a day or whatever it is. And just get those clips out there. Cause eventually one of them is going to hit and it's going to end up on somebody's, some coaches page. Like there's a lot of coaches that follow me. Um, there's a lot of like pros overseas that follow me. I'm sure there there's like former NBA players that follow. There's current NBA players that follow me. And it's just like, I just post basketball videos. So obviously basketball minds are watching basketball content. And so the more you post, you know, individual clips of what you're doing, it gets people interested. And so one, one hits viral, they go to your page and now there's a link. And so this is the next part. When you make your mix, it has to be a link in your bio, or it has to be like easily accessible. So, you know, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever it is, there needs to be a link of, OK, go here to watch my highlight mix, because if they like one clip, it's like, OK, let me go see the mix. Now, if they like the mix, OK, let me see the full game. Now, if they like the full game, now let me reach out like that's how it works. It's a, it's, a, it's like a if anybody that sells stuff or buys products like it's a it's a that's a buying process. So the way people buy is like. They see somebody wearing it and like, okay, what is that? All oh, this brand. And then they type in the brand and look at the brand's videos. Now they're on the brand's website. Now they're looking at the brand's products. I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy this at some point. And so it's like a, you're taking them through a process. And so think of that same process. You know, when coaches are coming to look at your page, it's like, what process are they going to go through? They came up, they came to your profile off of a video that had, you know, 40,000 views of you doing something good. So now they're on that profile. They see your name, they see your face, they see, okay, six, three point guard. Um, you know, 200 pounds, goes to this school, graduates in 2026, plays in, you know, Wisconsin, whatever. This is my, a yeah, make sure you put your AAU team, like whatever AAU team you play for and whatever high school you play for, make sure that's in the bio or, or somewhere where they can see it. And then they can go and be like, oh, okay, let me look. You know what I'm saying? They're just going to keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And now they're interested. And so like, that's the mindset you got to have when you're trying to get yourself recruited and you don't really have the connects and all you got is your phone. And so, like, don't take this shit for granted, bro. Like, y'all really got, um, y'all really got opportunity. And if you put it in real work, like, a lot of these kids don't put it in real work. I promise you they don't. Like, every, like, this shit is up for grabs. The game is up for grabs. And so, if you're young and you're 15 right now and you got some talent or you've been working on your game, like, the shit is up for grabs. I'm telling you. I watch 20 high school games a week. The shit is up for grabs, bro. I watched Mount Verde versus, you know, the Boozer Twins. Wasn't impressed. Like, and I wouldn't say not impressed with them individually, but they're just like, they weren't doing anything that makes me think that they're a legitimate top 10, you know, in their class. Seriously. Like they're just, okay, one dude's six eleven. So what, if you're over, by the way, if you are over six, five, if you're six, five and up, you get 
privilege. It's just is what it is. Like most people aren't that tall. For me, I'm like almost six three in shoes, six two and a half, and so. And I got a six nine wingspan. Wingspan. So like when people see me play, I get a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. But like even a six two and a half ish, like that's semi common. But like six five up, that plays the guard position. That's not common. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's like okay, that's a legitimate NBA point guard size. You know what I'm saying? Steph Curry six three. Kyrie's like six three. They both look small on the screen versus other people, right? That's how I would look if I was playing against NBA players. And so just know like if you're six five and up, you get a little bit of. Um, grace or you get a benefit of a doubt and so i say all that to say just like just understand what game you're playing like i'm trying to break this down to you so you can understand how to put yourself in a position to position to succeed and so now that you have all that set up the next approach which i don't really like this approach like it's marketing versus like outreach like it's inbound or outbound and so in the sales world and the business world there's inbound sales and there's outbound sales outbound sales is like I go to the gym and I'm talking to kids and be like, hey, do you got a trainer? Who do you train with? Do you want to come train with me? Like, I don't do that. Like most times when people want to train with me, they DM me and they're like, hey, do you have this going on? Do you have that going on? And I'll be like, yeah. And right now I'm I don't, I'm pretty closed off. Like everybody I train, I only train like in person right now, six kids, you know, just because like I've been, you know, sporadic with gym space. Some places unreliable, but that's inbound. Right. The people that ask me to do things for them. You know, whether in their different state and they're like, hey, can you do film study for me or um, can you come up with this like game plan or do you have any like offensive plays? Like that's a new one that I got, you know, some coach DM me and asked me, you know, do I have any offenses that he could use? And so, um, you know, I, I brought stuff up, but that's inbound. Like I post content of what I know and what I do and like all these things. And then people message me like that's the way you want to be in life in general. You don't want to be out here asking people, yo, can you sponsor me? Yo, can you do you want to do a business deal with me? You want people to ask you like that's the position of power. And so this is how you put yourself in position of power by marketing yourself and putting all those things out there and being like, and then coaches DM you and be like, Hey, who do you play for? Or do you have any offers? Or do you, and you know, you know, what's crazy. Like you can hack the game. Like, and I almost don't even want to say this cause I feel like it's unethical, but I'll tell y'all I've literally heard so many stories of people posting fake offers and then it makes other real coaches actually offer them. Because they think, okay, if he's good enough to get offered by this school, then he's good enough to come to my school. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, there's people that have literally done that. They'll post a fake offer. Like, yeah, I got a D2 offer from or a D1 offer. And they'll make, like, the little graphics and shit. And they'll post it and they'll make their page look, um, like, good or whatever. And then they'll actually get real offers off that. So, I don't know if I would do that personally. But, hey, the game is the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't be mad at people that did that. Um, But... If you do do the outreach part, like which I think that's also helpful if you do send out emails or you send out DMs or whatever it is. I think the the number one thing you got to understand is like what is the if it's email, what is the subject line? If it's DM, what are the first, you know, I don't even know how long the character count is. Like when you open a DM and it's like somebody sent you a paragraph, you get to read the first like, you know, six words or whatever it is. Like what are those six words? You know, and so what I would do. I would try a couple different methods and like, don't be afraid to message people twice or email twice and test different subject lines or whatever. I would literally put, if I was, I would put my attributes and then I would, I would put my height and then I'll put my attributes. Unless you are, I wouldn't put my height if I'm under six feet, to be honest. And so if they don't ask, don't tell them yet. Like just let them find out on their own, but don't be like, yeah, I got a 12 inch vert. Like don't, you don't want to be telling people that shit. You know what I'm saying? They'll find out at some point, but it ain't going to matter by that time. Um, but I would put my height. So like for me personally, if okay, I would put six, three guard, I would put six, three, um, shot making point guard, you know what I'm saying? Or six, six, um, high flying, you know, two guard, you know what I'm saying? Or something that's like the, or six, six, two guard with 40 inch vert. Like I would literally put those things in the subject line. And then I would, after that, I would put, what did I write down? Um, and then I would put film because I would, I would put my film in the email. So like I would put six, six, you know, um, point guard that can shoot or six, six jump shooting point guard game film. Like that would be my subject line. You know what I'm saying? Cause like for me, if I'm a coach and I'm just going through, 
Like, and I'd probably try to put an emoji that stands out like a basketball emoji or something that's like yellow or red or orange. Like those colors stick out the most. And so when they're scrolling through their email, they see this like yellow ass emoji. And then it's like, okay, six, six, you know, whatever, whatever game film. Like that's clickable to me. You know what I'm saying? For me, that's clickable. You got to think of this shit as like YouTube thumbnails or like, you know what I'm saying? The headline to a video. Like you, re- that's how you really got to think. Cause you want them to click. Like the goal is to get the coach to click your email, or click your message. And so the best way to do that is intrigue them, like make it interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like put something that's like, that's going to make them think that you can add value to what they're doing. And then in the body of the email, something I would probably put is, um, I would, the first thing I would put is, you know, I am a, I, I graduated, I'm a player, a basketball player that graduates in 2026 and I play at this school and I'm looking to play somewhere or I'm looking to play at your school. And then I would put, um, I would just attach to the film, like keep it short and sweet. You don't want to be like two paragraphs deep. Like nobody wants to read that shit. I promise you. And so you want to make your first three sentences. I want it to be like two, three sentences. That's like, this is who I am. This is what I do. Um, I think I can make your team better. Here's film and like shut up and let him click it and watch it. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to talk as much. You just want to give them, you just want to be straight to the point and then let them go watch. That's pretty much it. So you want to get them to see you, get them to click, get them to read it and get them to watch. That's it. You know, you don't want to be yapping. You don't want to be all this bullshit. If they want to know, they'll, they'll hit you up and they'll ask you more. You know what I'm saying? But um, don't talk unnecessarily and don't be typing out paragraphs and please let me get an opportunity to come on to your school. Like you sound desperate. You know what I'm saying? And so that that would be my approach. No, this isn't pre-recorded. I'm just talking. I don't want to read the comments right now because um, it's going to make me lose my train of thought. But that's my approach to getting recruited. And if you and if you just jumped in, like I'm going to post this entire thing on YouTube so you know um, exactly what it is that you should do in order to get yourself recruited if you have absolutely no offers and it's like your senior year, it's your junior year. Like that's, this is, and this is a strategy I'm going to do for my students. Like I'm going to help them build their pages out and be like, yo, this is how you needed to make it look and make sure the thing that everybody underestimates is like first impression actually matters. And so if your game is not in a place to where you feel like, you know, or if you don't feel fully developed or feel as if you're not in a position to make an impact right away, like don't promote yourself yet. So if you're a sophomore, and you feel like, okay, I still got to work on my jump shot or I got to get a little bit more athletic or, you know, I got to tighten up my handle. Do not post yourself because if they see you and you're missing shots, that's going to be their first impression. Like people have no idea that Patrick Beverly was became a three point shooter and started shooting like 40 percent some season. People don't know. They still think Patrick Beverly can't shoot. Same thing with Rondo. His percentages went up, but nobody thinks of Rondo or Patrick Beverly a shooter. Why? First impression. And so you got to understand that that should like actually matters. Um and so make sure you're fully developed before you start promoting yourself and you can still build your pages out, but just, you know what I'm saying? Before you start doing game films and letting coaches watch you and all these other things. And like you're young, develop your game and develop your skills. And so when they do see you, you know, you are the player that you want to be. That's, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you might not be fully there yet. Like you're not all the way strong yet at this, or you don't weigh as much as you want to weigh now, but just make sure your game is sharp before you start promoting yourself. It's like if you're selling a product, make sure the product is good before you start marketing it. You know what I'm saying? Like don't have a shitty product and it's falling apart and like the thing don't barely work and you're trying to market this shit to people. And like that's how you got to think about it. And so that's all I got. Like I think that's the best strategy. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, yeah, and just every day post clips as many as you can. And don't post them all back to back to back, but just like have all your clips set up, you know, to where it's just like, okay, I can all my, my email set up and make sure you have your email in your bio so they can contact you. Um, make sure like your YouTube is set up with all your, with your highlight mix on there and you got full games on there. And then after all that stuff is set up, then you post the the Instagram reels, then you post the TikToks, then you post YouTube shorts and then you post on LinkedIn and try to promote yourself. Cause then when they click on your page, everything is already there. You don't have to, they don't have to message you like, Hey, you got a full game. And now you got to go find a full game and send it to them individually. Like it should already be there ready for them. You know what I'm saying? Make the process as easy as possible for whoever finds you. And, then, and I promise you like that whole strategy, it will work. It will work. The reason I know it will work because this is how I found other kids like that, that Jackie girl. I don't even know if y'all seen her. I follow her like Jackie Polk or something like that. 
I found her page like two years ago, and I'm like, if I was a college coach, I would literally recruit her. Like she could shoot from however far she can handle the press. Like she knows how to get to the bucket. Like she's good. You know what I'm saying? But I only knew that because she just posts clips of herself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's that simple. And so um, that entire strategy, like I'm telling you, that's that's how you want to be. And make sure you like your full games are on um, your YouTube. And what I would do too is like huddle is. I don't like huddle. I don't like how the whole thing works. And so I would screen record my own games off huddle and put them on YouTube just so it's easier for people to access. They don't got to go through all this bullshit just to see you play. Like I wouldn't, I would make it as easy as possible to see you play. Like that's the whole goal. And so that's it, man. That's my whole strategy. I just wanted to make sure I get that out there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start answering some questions and then, you know, just chat it up, chat it up a little bit and you know, be on my way. Somebody asked what my height is. I mentioned that six two and a half. What kind of camera? I I got a fish on lens on my phone because it's like the phone is literally like three feet away from me. But I like I don't like the camera to be so up close. I like to see the full view. So yeah. Someone asked uh, if I make like five threes in a game and add all the clips in a film vid. Is that fine? I mean, I would do that. Like, I, that would be one of my, that would be one of my reels. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as like the full highlight mix, I would wait till the end of the season to make that mix and then start pushing everything out there. But as far as like, and you can even make a mid-season mix. Like, there's people that have those two, where it's like, okay, middle of the season, this is what I've done so far this season. And then like, if you hit five threes in a game, I would make that one video and have the title be like, I hit, made five threes in one game here was my i was five for seven or whatever it was and i would make that a video and i would just push that reel out you know what i'm saying or I'd put it on tiktok and, and all that kind of stuff um what can i do to get a personal evaluation on any of it from get a personal evaluation from me um i don't really do those right now just because like i'm kind of getting entrenched in a lot of things but i am on my website starting to set up different services because like people reach out to me for random things so like they'll reach out to me for custom plans which i don't really do and i just like okay which i charge like money for all this stuff right if somebody just asks me randomly just because it's time consuming um so i'll have things in there where like you can call and get a consultation or you can submit film and i'll do an evaluation and, and like maybe do a custom skill plan if you need that that'd be like extra but and also the reason I've started charging for a lot of different things is because like my time gets crunched. So if for people that want to get into business, when you start running out of time, you have to start driving up your price. That's just how it goes. And so for me, like I can't just I used to just show up to the gym. My One of my students would be like, hey, do you want to go to the gym today? I'd be like, OK, bet. You know, what I'm saying I stopped doing that because now I got to film and I got to do all this stuff. And so now it's like you want to train with me. It's gonna cost money nine times out of ten or it's only gonna be at this specific time because this is the only time i train there's no more random trainings and so you know i don't want to charge but the more people that pay for stuff uh, then the more people i can help for free so that's kind of how it works so don't worry as much as like okay i can't afford some of these things like the more people that can afford it it actually helps the people that can't and so i i'm trying to do my best to help both sides but i'm in a place right now it's like i have to charge because it's just it's just the way the world system works and, and, you know, I don't want to get too deep in it, but it's just how things work. Like you got to set up systems in order to receive the value that you've given to other people, you know, or also to come to you in random ways that don't really work the best sometimes. Um, can you lie about your offers? I mean, I wouldn't, but I've seen it work. That's how I'm going to put it. That's it, bro. I've done music request. <laughs> Uh, what's the difference between a D1 player and a D2 player? Uh, opportunity, nine times out of 10, or height, or athleticism. How can you get better at reading the defense when driving? Uh, I think it's just playing consistently, like playing and playing and playing and playing and playing, bro. Experience is the most underrated thing in the world. And also watch film and understand, like watch the best drivers in the world. Like watch Kyrie drive to the basket or watch Steph drive to the basket or watch LeBron drive to the basket and all these people and See, even though LeBron's stronger, it's like, okay, if you drive against somebody you're stronger, then you're still going to have to know some techniques to, you know, use that strength to your advantage. So the thing I don't like is like when people always think, oh, well, it helps that he's a 6'9 freak. And it's like, yeah, he's okay. He's being guarded by a 6'6 dude that weighs 20 less pounds than him. If you're 6'3, there's going to be a six foot guard 
that's guarding you and they weigh 20 less pounds than you. So the t- same technique, you know, um, can work in that situation. And so just understand how a ratio works and don't think that just because someone's like massive that you can't use things that they do. Like I use T-Max has he pull up or mid range all the time or his, his fake drive turnaround. Like I use that all the time and I'm six, two and he's six, nine, you know what I'm saying? And so things work regardless of height. Um, if you know what you're doing, um, <clears throat> my coach definitely got a favorite on the team, but I know I'm the better player. Sometimes that's just what it is, bro. Like, I hate to say it. I've been through the same thing, but basketball is political. Like coaches have favorites. Some coaches don't want, like I have students that go through it. Like I have students that get favored and it's like, okay, they're going to give them opportunity. And I have other, other students that are literally being held back. And it's like, they don't want this kid to succeed. And, you know, they still got to play him, but they don't want, they're not trying to help them. They don't draw plays for them. They don't, you know, let them handle the ball or do all these other things. And it's like, they got to go get it. And so that situation is real. I think, you know, you're not really going to change the coach's mind. I wouldn't even try. Um, and you got to be realistic. Like, don't just say they have favorite favorites and you're not really that good. You know, a lot of people do that. Like, actually look at it for what it is and be realistic of like, am I good or not? You know what I'm saying? And you got to prove it to yourself by playing the level of competition <clears throat> that you're at and succeeding against them. Like if you can't succeed against the type of players that you play against at an open gym or in a one on one or any other setting, then <clears throat> you got to kind of get a reality check and be like, OK, I actually have to get better. Like I'm not as good as I think I am. You know, um, you got to be real. Or and if you can't see it for yourself, you need to ask the most honest person, you know, um, and then let them tell you and, and take it for what it is, you know. And then if it's real, like if you're actually good, um, find a different place to play. Like, and if you can't, it just is what it is, bro. A lot of people, I can't move. I can't change schools. I can't do, then, then you, then you're stuck, bro. Like there's only so much you can do. And so I'm going to give you all the options. If you can't do any of the options, then it just kind of is what it is. And you got to deal with it. Like that's just reality of the situation. You know, I'm not going to try to hype you up and make you feel like you can overcome it, bro. Like just work hard, bro. That shit ain't real. Coaches have favorites. Like I thought I could outwork my coach's opinion. You can't do that. Um, unless they're like a realistic person or they'll tell you why you're not playing. Like if your coach is a real person, um, then you can kind of, you know, ask him and see what they say and see if you can do things to get better, you know. But if it's just another bullshit coach that gives you a bullshit answer, then you're probably out of luck, bro. Just being honest with you. Um, <laughs> it was better for work Jalen Brunson or DeMar. Jalen Brunson, low-key. Low key, low key. How do I feel about the heavy ball for form shooting and ball handling? Um, I don't know much about ball handling wise, but I like it for shooting. Like I let um, I told one of my students to get one and um, she increased her range using that like all the time on her form shots. And so now she's like a real shooter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, But we grinded it out. You know, we did a lot in order to get her jump shot to where she where it is. and, And she did a lot for it and she earned it. She earned the ability to make you know, three threes a game, you know, after she had zero attempts last year for threes, we reconstructed her entire jump shot over the past year. And now she makes three threes a game. And, you know, she earned that. But yeah, I like the heavy ball. Um, How do I feel about semi pro hoops? I don't, mm, I don't know too much about semi pro hoops. Like, I don't feel like it's a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? If that's, where you can play at, I would do it. Like, I don't understand the concept of semi-pro, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, how are you half professional? That like, is that, is not like collegiate? College players are basically half professional, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really understand the whole concept of semi-pro, but ball is ball, man. Like, if you can play ball is ball, then, you know, I would play. Did you reconstruct using the pro shooting? Yes, I reconstructed her shot using pro shooting secrets, like, that book i'm telling you bro and and i used it first on myself because i had to reconstruct my shot after um, my knee injury and all these other things and just not paying attention to my habits and you know just a lot of different things but i reconstructed it myself and like i swear by that book and so we used you know she has the book i gave it to her but we used all the concepts in that and like it's a it gives you an understanding of the truth about shooting because there's a lies a lot of lies out there about shooting like there's i i, I promise you i don't want to call out people's name but like the most famous shooting coach you know is a liar (laughs) and not not the number one guy the number two guy and so if you can you know read between the lines on who i'm talking about 
it's just it, there's no proof behind the methods. And it's like, okay, I watch the and the thing about you got to understand about basketball is the proof is in the film. I don't give a fuck what no coach says. I don't care what anybody tries to tell you. I don't want, I don't care if they tell you to do all these weird techniques and all this other bullshit. The pros have already said it and the proof is in the film. Plain and simple. And so if you're in question about how to do certain things, stop watching trainers and go watch actual basketball. Watch the top 25 players in the world, you know, or watch the top 20 players in the last, you know, 20 years and just watch them religiously and watch them all and f- look at the similarities and be like, OK, they all do this specific thing when they're shooting. They all do this specific thing on dribble pull ups. They all do this and then just, just go off that and be like, OK, if this is how they do it. That's how I'm doing it because that's how they learned. They didn't grow up. The people you watch right now on the Internet did not grow up watching trainers. I promise you. They either had a dad in the league or uncle in the league or they only watched their favorite players and copied every single thing that they did. And so I think that's where all the mass confusion comes from is like people just watch trainers on trainers on trainers on trainers. And that's why I don't post myself playing or post myself doing drills or all these things to do. It's like, bro, it's in the film. That's how I learned. It's in the film. You know, so I think (laughs) uh, that's like that's the truth about it, bro. It's and so if you want to unconfuse yourself, um, unfollow every single trainer that shows you different drills and all that shit straight up uh tbl tbl what's a tbl taiwan or some shit (laughs) yeah like i think yeah i think just figure out ways to make the jump wherever you're trying to go so if you want to go overseas like figure out what a path is to that whether it's like an exposure camp that's legitimate or you know semi-pro league like i think that's i think that's a legitimate way um, so <laughs> I instantly thought of Lethal Shooter. That's why I said not the number one guy, the number two guy. He, lethal Shooter is the number one shooting guy, right? There's the number. There's a number two guy. I think he's a liar. Um, that's just me. You know, I studied it. I studied the film. I studied his videos, and I'm like, eh, not interested. Um, how should you be working during in season while having to play full games on full days? So. Hmm. For me, I worked out in season the same way I did off season it minus uh, an extreme amount of weight training. And so I got my body in shape, you know, for the season and like make sure my body was ready and right. And then my only switch was literally um, toning down the intensity of my weight training. So I still work on my body and like I lift a little bit and stretch all the time and like do all my workouts and like I still go through the same skill routines of like I'm doing my you know 500 to 800 makes a day like I'm still doing that in season you know what I'm saying and so my skill doesn't drop off so if you ever noticed I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this and I think Gilbert Arenas talked about this like a couple years ago when the NBA season starts like so many players are just on fire like starting off hot you know what I'm saying like killing like this dude has 40 like how the fuck did he get 40 like how did he get 35 and he never does this watch what happens in february in march in april those players drop off and the stars stay up it's because the stars still actually work out they still stay after practice you know what i'm saying and they got a game to route and they do their 300 makes and so i don't think there should really be and, and you can take off some of the intensity right like you don't want to be going like full speed um pushing yourself to the limit for two hours and you got a game tomorrow like i don't think that's it's not sustainable for a lot of people. Like for me, it's sustainable for me. Cause it's just part of my lifestyle. It's like, I do this every single day. So a game doesn't affect me. Like my workouts make me way more tired than a game does. You know what I'm saying? And so like, that's how that's was my approach is like everything I do now, the game one is not even going to be close. You know what I'm saying? To uh, like, I'll be able to run all day. And that that's kind of how I approached it. Um, but I think just, you know, find your own rhythm. Don't feel like, okay, 100 shots a day and you've been doing 600 shots a day all summer and now you're toning it down by 500. Like, your game's going to fall off, bro. So stay sharp. Whatever you got to do to stay sharp, that's what I would do. Um, so you just kind of got to know yourself. Uh, yeah, Curry, KD, J. Yeah, they all sway. And it's like, and I see somebody else that's like, jump straight up and down. No. Fuck out of here. And like, jumping straight up and down works. Um but it's only if you're strong enough you know what i'm saying and so if you're shooting for bombs from behind the three-point line most people don't have the strength to shoot a three without jumping like casually without making it feel like a push 
you know, and so that's something to think about. Um, coaches always taking jabs at you in his speeches make my confidence go up and down. So don't rely on them for confidence. Like confidence, you got to get to a level to where your confidence is like unshakable. And it confidence has to come from within. And so for me, you know, whether I was playing like two minutes a game or I'd go at, in and out because of one mistake, like it never really shook my confidence. And I think one thing that also helps with that is like play. And if you're if your minutes are like up and down, even if they were, even if you're playing all the minutes, like still keep playing open gym somewhere if you can. Like go to the rec, you know, what I'm saying on a Wednesday night and hoop. You know what I mean? Like, just keep playing in places to where your confidence really can't go up and down. It's like, okay, I play every day. So whether I play in the real game or I play at this open gym or I go to the courts or whatever it is, like, I'm still hooping regardless. So it don't even matter what the coach is doing at this point. I'm just going to go play tomorrow and I'm I'm killing. So I still have my own confidence. And so don't let your only five on fives be at the school. Like, that's the biggest mistake a lot of players make is they only play at the school. They only play at practice and their coach ain't fucking with them. Now their confidence is shot because they have nowhere else to hoop. You need other places to hoop to keep your confidence alive. You know what I'm saying? Like that's real. Um, you know, and that's what I would do. If you don't have a basketball court during the winter, how would you go about practicing? I would figure it out, bro. Like, you know what I mean? And, and I'm one of those kids I would shoot in the cold. Like, unless it's like negative, um, if it's like decently 25 or 30 degrees, like I'm probably going to shoot in the cold. I'm just being honest. Like that's me. I'll, I'll walk to the nearest court and just even if it's 20 minutes and now my hands are numb, I'm going to do that because it's all I can do. And so I think you just do what you can do and control what you can control and, and try not to worry about why well, I can't do this and what I can't do that. Like think about what you can actually do and go and do that. Um, I think that's your best approach. And then once you have that mindset, you'll figure out an answer. Mental training in your room and visualize, visualize, visualizing does work for anybody that does not know. Visualizing does work. Um, I used to do it like I didn't know that's what I was doing. I like I found some random tape and I put it on my MP3 player. That's what we used to have when I was when I was young. MP3 players. We didn't have iPods or phones, but I, I put it on there and I used to listen to it every day. And like, I don't know, bro. I feel like it worked I, and I can't even find it. I wish I knew what happened to it. Um but like all that stuff like works for real, you know, make sure you're putting the right things in your brain before anything else. Like, don't be listening to bullshit. Don't be listening to people complain on the Internet. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, listen to things that's going to give you a boost. You know, listen to things that will make you confident. Tips for the turn and shooting. I think it's just practicing it, like visualize it and watch people do it and then just kind of practice it, practice it without the ball and just get used to the motion and don't force it. Don't feel like um, you got to turn so much because the the sway and the turn, the only things like that's it's really needed for is distance. And so if you can shoot a three, you know, without needing it as much, then you're fine. Like, but if you're farther back, that's when you start to implement those things. And so for younger players who can't shoot threes, like if you're in sixth grade and you can't shoot threes and it's hard for you to get it there, then I would start to use those techniques more and start to focus on that more. But, like, if you got enough strength to where it's, like, you could pretty much shoot it like a free throw and get, like, this high off the ground, um, then you don't, you don't need it as much. You know what I'm saying? I use the turn when I'm when I'm moving to my shooting hand. So if I'm right-handed and I'm going to my right and then I have to turn left to the basket, like, that's when I'll shoot it. But I think it's, it's a matter of um, watch the people that do it really well and subconsciously you, you start to do it. And that's the thing I always say is, like, you're going to shoot – and play like the person you watch the most. And so if you're trying to gain certain skills, it's like literally only watch those players and like try to be like them when you're actually playing. Like, so every time I did footwork, I tried to do it how Kobe did it. You know what I'm saying? And then when I had to do things off the dribble, I tried to do it how Iverson did it. You know what I'm saying? And and so don't think of it any other way than that. And then you'll start to be like, okay, he did it this way. Let me do it this way. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you kind of adapt your game. And so if you're trying to add pieces to your game, it's like, okay, I want to add things around the basket, watch the best people around the basket, and then just be like, okay, try to do it like them. And and if you're, okay, I want to get better at coming off screens and shooting, watch the best people that come off screens and shoot it and try to do it like them. And that's how you piece it together by just watching the people who are best at the thing that you're trying to learn. And you start to do it subconsciously. Any advice for me? I'm going to play my freshman year and I want to be an elite player in high school. I mean, it's kind of vague, bro. It's really just like practice and go to camps and get experience and, you know, don't complicate your workouts. Just like, you know, practice on the easy basic stuff and master it 
and make sure your footwork's perfect and you know how to pass with both hands and dribble with both hands and lay it up and finish and floater with both hands. Like just easy shit, bro. Get really, really good at that. And I promise you, you'll pass everyone else uh, and make sure you're athletic, like work on your running and your and being in shape. It's just basic shit, bro, to be honest. But camps do help. Go to camps. YMCA camp. I don't care. Go. How much do you recommend makes? I don't know, bro. Like that's, again, that's a vague question of like, how many shots should you make every day? It depends on you and it depends on what you need in the moment. And, you know, it depends on how your jump shot is. So there's no real answer. It's just like, do as much as you can. You know what I'm saying? Do as much as you can of everything you need to do. And so that's always my approach is like, if I need to get better at dribbling and shooting and doing all these things, it's like, how much can I tolerate without going to a place where I'm going to hurt myself? And like, okay, I only have three hours. And I was like, okay, let me practice this for an hour and that for an hour. And I got to stretch. I got to do this. And so it's just figuring it out on your own based on who you are and what you need. Um, and just taking it day by day. Some things might change. Like you might have to work on shooting more at the beginning. And then it's like, okay, my shot's really good, but my finishing has been off. And so now I got to work on finishing, you know, and it's just, it's just things like that. What's your tips for mental strength? Personally, let my coach in the crowd affect me. Uh, I think. Hmm. So the thing about mental strength, uh, you got to kind of accept the truth of who you are. I think the people that get rattled mentally. Like, I don't think I'm trying to think if I've ever been rattled mentally when it comes to like a game. I don't think so. Though there's okay, there's a certain scenario where I would play and I wouldn't play well, but I figured out it was because of someone that I was playing with, and because I, I couldn't figure out like every time I would go play in this, um, you know, in this event or or this type of environment, it's like why am I not playing how I know how to play? Like I drop a level in confidence, and it's like oh, it's because of this person. It's like fucking me up subconsciously, you know what I'm saying? And so the people you're around matter, and I think you got to be careful um and be hyper aware of what people say to you like even if it's your friends or your mom or your coach like be hyper aware of what they're saying and if they're saying things that's like that kind of is like pokes at you and you don't have anybody else to build that confidence up you got to get away from them as much as fast as possible um also i think uh the next thing is is just like you got to look at yourself realistically like the thing that made me confident all the time was like I was I was confident in knowing that I had flaws. And so if somebody was like, man, you're slow or you suck at defense, I'd be like, yeah, I kind of am bad at defense right now. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't deny it or I wouldn't try to run from that. And so I think you got to accept the truth about who you are and where you're at in the moment. That doesn't mean you have to like it. That doesn't mean um, you can't get better. But just right now it just is what it is like that's the motto like it is what it is okay i can't shoot it is what it is okay i'm bad at defense it is what it is like accept it so if the other if the other people say it then it's like okay you're right i'm trash at defense right now or yeah he cooked me you know what i'm saying like when you start to come at it that way of like acknowledging the truth then people will less likely make fun of you because it's like they're not going to make fun of somebody who's like laughing with them it's like oh yeah you're and somebody like when people talk about i'm bald right They'll be like, oh, yeah, you're bold. And I'll be like, damn, yeah, I know I cut my shit. My hairline was good. And then I'll point at it and show them. And it's like, okay, now you can't make fun of me because it's like, I don't care. You know what I mean? And so just that's that's like the cornerstone of um, building mental strength is just accepting yourself in the moment and trying your best. Like if that's what it is and that's what it is. And notice and understand that most people that talk shit about you, like either they're just like doing it for the fun of it or um you know, they're probably insecure themselves or, you know, it's just there's different reasons people do it. But just know it don't matter. You know, it don't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Like as long as you know who you are and you, you can accept who you are and your own flaws, then like mentally you should be fine. And so I think you got to go to that place and then, you know, let everything else happen from that. And don't try to make too much happen. Um, and don't try to force your way. Just just do the daily work and, and stay with it, you know. All right, last couple questions and I'm out. Let me know if y'all got anything else before I say my parting words. How should I build connections with coaches? I moved to a new state and don't really know how to. I think just be around. Just be around them. Like if you're trying to if you're trying to connect with your new coaches, literally just go to everything. 
and just be like, hey, I'm new here. Like, do y'all have open gyms? Do you have workouts? Do you, like, is there anything I could do for the team? Like, um, you know, I'm going to play next year or whenever you're going to play. I don't know if you can play this year or whatever. Just just ask questions and figure out when things are and just be around and let them know that you're like part of the basketball program. Like you don't have to be friends with the coach or you don't have to be like super cool with them, but just let, let them know that you're like serious about basketball and you want to play and that you do work and that you're a good teammate and just a good person overall and just show up to things that they have going on. Um, and then the rest should kind of take care of itself. Like you'll have to prove yourself obviously, but, um, I think that's a good start. Like don't force it. Don't feel like you got to be buddy, buddy. Um, cause you don't, but just, you know, just do your thing and just be around bro. And, and once things start to rev up and there's open gyms or whatever, just ask, be like, Hey, when's the next, you know, when's the next workout and just show up to the workout. When's the next, this, when's the next, that, you know what I'm saying? And just those kind of things will help you because then they know you want to be at stuff. You know what I mean? How's your teammate averaging 18 damaging to the team? I don't understand that, bro. Um, should I go to open runs? Go to anything, bro. Go to anything and everything. Any opportunity there is to hoop, go. That's the number one thing I'll tell you. Don't ask, should I do this? Should I do that? Go and figure it out. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, fuck it. But don't say, oh, I wish I would have went. Go. <laughs> Just go. Um, how do you get more playing time with a coach? Who, this is going to be my last, my last answer. Um, how do I get more playing time with a coach who shows favoritism? Don't try to change their mind. Just be the best teammate you can be. Be professional about it. Don't whine. Don't do none of that shit. And then um, after the season's over, leave. Don't try to change their mind, bro. It's Every coach has favorites, but um, you got to see what their favorites are. Like my favorites are the ones that don't fucking complain and they do the work and they don't treat the drills and, you know, they execute how I want them to execute and they play good basketball and they're a good teammate, like, those are my favorites. I have favorites. Those are my favorites. But if their favorite is like, oh, I've known this kid since he was in seventh grade, you might be fucked. <laughs> Just keeping it real, bro. Um. <laughs> uh, y'all should not be fighting to score. If you're trying to score, you're trying too hard. Um, I answered the heavy ball one earlier i think it's cool it's fine you don't have to use index shooting by the way that's one of the things in pro shooting secrets you don't have to switch it if you shoot with middle finger just leave it but um my closing thoughts i think you know the number one thing is confidence in your game and the number one way to get confidence is get experience in the thing you're not confident in like this is the thing i always say if you're not confident in going one-on-one -on -one against people play one-on-one -on -one every day watch what happens if you're not confident in five on five and making decisions, go to as many pickup runs as you can. Watch what happens. It's literally getting experience in the thing you're not confident in and start at the bottom. A lot of people are afraid to start at the bottom. My shooting sucks. Me, I do form shooting. Well, I don't want to do form shooting. Okay. If you don't want to start at the bottom of the thing you're not confident in, good luck. You know what I'm saying? That, that's the key. You have to start at the bottom of the thing that you're not confident in. And then, you know, everything will take care of itself. But I appreciate y'all jumping in the live. I'm out. Make sure I'm going to post this on YouTube. Actually, I need to do my podcast. Um, these are going to go on podcast, too, because I think these are good things that just, you know, some people might want to listen to. They need little reminders. Um, you know, I kind of underrate myself with the things I say. A lot of people, man, you dropped a gem on this one or this was a good video or whatever it is. And so I always forget. Um, but hey, I'm going to make sure I get the podcast going. Um, I'm going to put these on YouTube and I'll clip all this stuff and it'll be good. But all right. I'm out. See y'all later.